Hey guys, welcome back to the rating climb. Today we're going to go to 1450. And for those of you who caught the last stream, you know we almost lost. We were very close to losing. We blundered a rook. I blundered a rook. And somehow <laughs> kind of got a little lucky with the checkmate to, to actually win the game. Let's go for another Ponziani. We haven't played that in a few games. We do see knight to f6. So we're going to actually ignore the attack and play d4. And the point is that if black does go for this, we're going to push forward, chase the knight away, and we will be able to get our pawn back. This is the other line that they can play. And this way, I think we need to push forward, attack the knight first, and then we will recapture with our pawn. <coughs> hmm. All right, and yep, knight to d, uh, d5 is pretty normal. Let's go ahead and recapture. D6. So it looks like black wants to immediately attack the pawn. I'm going to start thinking about, can I take advantage of the fact that this knight is undefended? So maybe a move like queen b3, kind of lining up here. I'm also thinking about bishop c4. Or bishop b5. Bishop b5 kind of takes the knight out of the attack here. So if black did take, I could capture with my knight. So I kind of like the look of that. Um, what other options do we have? Bishop g5 maybe looks interesting because on bishop e nah, maybe not. Bishop b7 looks pretty good for black. So I think what I'm going to do is play bishop b5. Just kind of preparing to meet black's threat with hopping my knight in because I would have this pinned. I think that makes the most sense. Also, I'm I like the fact that once I get this bishop out of the way, we can castle right away. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pin this guy. See how Black's going to respond to that. <clears throat> and they play bishop d7, which seems like a logical move. Breaks the pin. So again, they could potentially use their knight to attack here. Um, so I'm thinking of just castling because then even if they do take here, we always have the option to bring the rook over and potentially start causing some problems for black. So here's a situation where I don't want to get too low on time. As we've seen, uh, that's been the biggest problem in a lot of the, the recent games. And so I'm going to kind of go with my instinct here that castling should just turn out right for me. I'm not really going to necessarily analyze everything that might happen after all of these different captures. I'm going to go with my intuition, okay? And that's a, sometimes that's one of the best things that you can do to save time, especially early on in the game. You just play a logical move and just trust that whatever happens, you're going to be able to find a good move. Now, you have to kind of know the situations to do that. You can't just play the, the entire game never calculating. But this one is pretty obvious in the sense that Black's King is still here. Once I'm castled, my Rook can come over. And I think it's a, it's a safe move to make, if that makes sense. I'm also thinking about we could even recapture with the pawn, which would create an attack on Black's knight. That might be a way to gain some tempo. I mean, ideally, I would want to leave this open to attack the king. But it does look like Black can pretty easily play bishop e7 and castle. So because of that, maybe I do want to just take here. Black would have to deal with the threat here. They probably don't want to move the bishop because then they run into some problems with this knight. So I imagine they would probably retreat over to b6. I kind of like the look of that. So I think that is what I'm going to do. Go ahead and capture here and create the attack on the knight. Dragon's Gambit next game. I don't even know what Dragon's Gambit is. I've never heard of a Dragon's Gambit. All right, so an IB6, kind of like I expected. So let's just kind of take note here of what's going on. So we're castled. Black is not. I'm just keeping an eye on moves like this. I don't think right now it's it's good enough. I don't really have a way to follow up. But I, I always want to think through that whenever my opponent's king is not castled, and I am. Um, This move... I do want to pay attention to because it, it's going to unleash 
an attack on my bishop. So sometimes you have to watch out. Like, for example, if I were to try to trade, the knight could simply go back and I just lost a pawn here. Also, if I were to take this, then the bishop would take here. Now that's going to be interesting because then maybe we could bring the rook over. But still, I feel like I'm, I'm probably just losing a pawn in that situation. So with that in mind, I'm thinking knight to c3 is the move because it defends my bishop. So then if the knight were to try to capture, I would simply take it. And when the bishop took me, I would have it defended with my knight. This is probably a move that I'm going to want to play anyway. So I think knight to c3 makes the most sense. I'm just kind of scanning like other random moves to see if they can make any sense, but I don't really think it makes as much sense. It's just going here. So let's go knight c3. All right, bishop to b4. So black might be thinking about taking here and then doing what we just talked about, knight coming over. Uh, now I'm thinking about the move bishop g5 because I thought that the, you know, the response was going to be bishop e7. But now if black plays bishop e7, they just wasted a move. They went here and then they went back, which I have to feel good about that. So how else can black respond? f6 doesn't look good at all. That's going to just open up the king. Uh, I guess they could move the queen, but that seems like an awkward place for the queen to be. And then I guess there's knight to e7. Also feels like a little bit of an awkward move, putting themselves into a pin. So with all that in mind, I think bishop g5 seems like a pretty nice move. And probably black's best move would just be to go back and just say, you know what, I wasted a move, but I have to deal with this threat. So I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I don't see any reason not to do that. And it's a move that I would want to play anyway, right? Developing a piece. So. A lot of times, if you're thinking about a move and it lines up with kind of a the general principles in the position of like, let me try to get my pieces developed, uh, it, it's probably a good sign that that's a good move. So that's what I think is happening here. Yeah, and we do see bishop e7. So we essentially got knight to c3 for free, right? If you imagine if I would have played bishop g5 earlier, instead of knight to c3, black would have played bishop e7, my knight would still be back here on b1, right? But it's not. So I'm pretty happy about that. So now I'm debating, do we take? Black's going to take with the queen. There's going to be some pressure on this pawn. Not really super concerned because I can slide the rook over. But I could also just maybe retreat and leave this here. It's kind of cramping up Black's position a little bit. So that's why I'm kind of considering this move as well. I don't I wish I had this follow up but it's not really that great cuz black could just trade probably. So maybe I will go bishop to f4. Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to go bishop f4 and it's kind of just awkward like where is black's queen going to go? That's what I'm thinking through. And when I take, it makes it very clear. They just simply take back. They have some pressure on this. They can actually castle either direction. Um this way their position is more cramped. So I think I like the look of that. Now I'm going to start thinking through getting my rooks into the game <coughs> pretty soon here. So rook to e1, maybe moving my queen somewhere. I'm not sure where yet and bringing this rook over. Okay, kind of what I expected. And I'm also going to think, can I attack the king over here? Because notice how both of the knights are on the other side of the board. There's no knight on f6, which kind of normally defends. So I am going to think through things like this. Doesn't look like any of it quite works at the moment, but I'm going to just kind of be keeping an eye on that stuff. So let's see. How do we do this? Maybe queen to e2 looks like a pretty good square for the queen. It's ready to jump a rook over here, which looks very annoying for black. Also adds a defender. I'm not worried about knight to d4 because I could simply take. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and play queen to e2. I do want to keep an eye on the time and not get super low. So this isn't really a critical position. So I don't think I should spend an exorbitant amount of time here. Okay, so we have to make a decision with the bishop. And again, taking just kind of frees up black's position, makes it easy for them to figure out what to do. So again, I think I'm going to go with the retreat and just kind of keep all of these pieces sort of clumped up for black. It's kind of awkward, right? Because we have more space. Notice that we have like all these different squares for our pieces. So I think it's easier to play this way. Okay. Um, I'm checking for a tactic, but it doesn't look like it works because it's defended by the bishop, unfortunately. 
almost. Um, I mean, I could just ignore that and continue developing with the rook. I would lose the bishop, which I don't really want to do. But bishop b1 feels awkward because then my rook's stuck in the corner. So uh, that's also bishop e4. Maybe that's just the simplest. Just centralizing the bishop. I kind of like the look of that, actually. So let's go bishop to e4. And I don't really want to give up my strong bishop here for a knight. That's what I'm trying to do. And maybe next move we can play a3, chase that knight away. Probably has to go back. Ooh. So now I guess the knight has to go to d5. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring this rook over. Uh, I wanted to get that rook in the game anyway. And here I'm lined up on the queen. I'm pinning the bishop. And I'm planning to play a3. And it looks like this knight is going to be trapped. Unless it goes to d5, which 1, 2, 3, I'm just going to be winning a pawn. That's kind of what I'm setting up. But also, uh, depending on what happens with this pin, we might even be able to win some material here. So I'm going to start thinking about moves like this. Like this. Even e6, followed by maybe bringing the knight in, doesn't look like it works because of the rook. But I am thinking through all of this stuff. Also keeping this tactic in the back of my mind, if for some reason that ever works out. Even actually, now that my rook's out of here, bringing the bishop back to b1 and queen to e4 could create a pretty annoying threat for black to deal with. Because if they have to play a move like g6, that creates lots of weaknesses along the dark squares. Okay, the knight comes in. And <clears throat> it looks to me like we can just win a pawn here if we want. Which I think I'm going to do. Um, because otherwise I have to deal with my bishop here. And this just seems like a, like a free pawn. So we'll go ahead and take the pawn. And there is bishop to b5. So we need to pay attention to that move. But... I could play bishop c4, and I think I would be fine. And after the raid, I would simply take the queen, and I would also be fine. Okay, so it looks good to me. I did want to verify, but I think it's okay. So here we go. And now we're hitting that two-minute mark. So I'm going to start <coughs> speeding up a little bit. We're still in the middle game, still have quite a bit of, of the game left to go. So I'm going to play a little bit quicker with that in mind. Okay. Rook to c1. Another move which gains a tempo. Looks very appealing. Notice the bishop is supporting. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. Now I'm starting to feel really good about my rooks. Everything is looking like it's pretty well placed. And, okay. We don't even have to move that if we don't want. Not really a threat. Um, but it will be once the queen moves. So maybe I want to just move it anyway um yeah so we'll go ahead and go back just to not waste too much time and i'm starting to think about this i'm starting to think about how can i trade some stuff off because i do have that extra pawn going into an end game uh is gonna make my life easier a queen to b6 so let's go ahead and play knight to d4 <clears throat> I might trade. I might also jump over here and see what we can do to Black's king. Because if the knight gets to f5 and the queen gets to g4, all of a sudden, that looks very dangerous for Black. So, yeah, that looks pretty good, actually, more that I look at that. Taking the bishop also looks pretty good, uh, honestly, though. For both of these moves. Seem fine. <coughs> okay, pretty good move by our opponent there. Stops both of the plans, really. I'm going to play h3 because I'm not sure what to do and I don't want to waste a bunch of time. It gives me a place to run. And, um... Yeah, honestly, this is a this is a tough position, but I think Black's playing some pretty good moves. I don't see like anything immediate that's jumping out at me as as what I should do. So
Go bishop e3 will attack the queen. I'm probably just going to start trading stuff just for the sake of simplifying because of the time. Of course, I'm looking for mistakes, but I don't think our opponent has really made any right now. So. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe I'll trade and play like rook c3 just to defend this guy. Play queen g4. Trying to trade queens. I'm also threatening the bishop if black's not paying attention. If they do trade, then it, at least it simplifies the position a little bit. It's easier to play quicker. Now we need to get the king into the game and also kind of paying attention to stuff like this. So let's go ahead. Rook on the seventh rank is usually a pretty good idea. Now we have a, th a serious threat here if black's not careful. Let's keep going with our king. And, ooh, good move. Good move by our opponent. Very good move. Yeah, that's a, that's a big mistake on my part. So I'm going to have to sacrifice the rook. I didn't see that one. So now I'm going to try to push these pawns. Bishop's not going to win against a rook if I don't do something with the pawns. We're kind of running out of time too, which is not ideal. We can push this pawn here, which is going to tie down the king. And then maybe we can come over here and take this guy is what I'm trying to do here. Okay, they blunder the rook, so that's... That's pretty good for us. Pretty good news. All right, so our opponent, uh, I think they had us. If they would have just slowed down a little bit, they had plenty of time. They had the rook, and it just goes to show, like, if you're beating someone, you, you don't have to try to flag them. Just play, like, solid moves. You're going to just win, and that's what our opponent did wrong, right? So... <clears throat> Played really well, though. Yeah, 78, 80. I mean, they they were basically playing almost as good as us for most of the game until the end kind of just fell apart there with the Rook Blunder. Um, but it kind of goes to show, like, 14, 1500 is not that much different than 17, 18, 1900. It really isn't. It's, it's those, like, little decisions that you have to kind of fix. So let's check real quickly here. <clears throat> I feel like we... Played very well early on. But so did our opponent. They weren't making any mistakes. Should be four, best move. Okay, rook d1, best move. 
there's something right here that we missed. Let's see what it was. No, not really. Bishop d2. Engine wanted us to play bishop d2. Interesting. Just retreat the bishop, basically, is what it was saying. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so we had a slight advantage. And then... Yeah, this was this was a big mistake on my part. I didn't see this idea of bishop d8, and then I wouldn't be able to save the bishop. So that was huge. Uh, that was a big yeah, that was a big mistake right there. And then black had us. I mean, black should have easily won this game, right? We had 20 seconds. They had three minutes, and I guess they just forgot that the the bishop was defending here. Wow. So we kind of got a little lucky that one too, honestly. <coughs> Well, it happens. Let's play a new game. And it's getting kind of clear to me that I have to play a little bit faster or we're going to just keep getting into this time pressure thing at the end. So I'm going to do my best to still explain my thought process, but try to just do it a little bit faster. Okay. I don't want to just give them the center for free. I'm going to play d5 and shut down that. And you have to watch out for things like knight to b5. The one thing that you can do is just play c6. c6 just shuts down everything. There's no more knight b5. You're controlling the center, and I don't have to think about it anymore. So let's go bishop f5. It's a nice diagonal for the bishop. And also, because white hasn't played c4, and they can't really play c4 right away, I don't have to worry about queen b3, which is kind of a normal move um, if you bring your bishop out that you have to kind of pay attention to. I don't have to deal with that. Okay, so they definitely want to play e4. We could see that. And right now, they can't get away with it. We have enough pieces. So I'm not like super concerned with that. I think I'm just going to play e6 and continue developing. <coughs> wow, that is a bold move. So <coughs> I'm going to immediately start thinking of, can I take advantage of that? And I don't think I can because there's this bishop here, which can always come back. Like sacrificing here, you know, probably wouldn't be worth it. But uh, I'm going to keep an eye on that diagonal for sure. So let's go ahead and retreat. And <clears throat> yeah, I kind of thought we might see that move from this opponent. Well, of course, the obvious threat is that my bishop's going to get trapped. So there's kind of two ways to deal with that, h6 or h5. Um, h6 is much more passive. I think I like the idea of h5, and also if the pawn pushes, then I can relocate my knight around to the square probably. So let's let's go with h5. And of course, if white takes, I'm pretty happy because then this is an isolated pawn that's you know pretty easy to attack. Like a bishop e7, the rook, the bishop, the queen, everything's going to be lined up on it. Yeah, I'm expecting g5. So I want to be careful here because like if I go to h7, then my knight's kind of stuck. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go back to g8, which might seem counterintuitive. But the point is that I want to go to e7 and f5. And this is kind of common a lot of times when your opponents push pawns forward, they create squares that you could jump to. Now that being said, the other option is to go here. But no, I really want this knight to go there. And yeah, I think, you know, it's a closed off position. I have a little bit more time. I think I can get away with a passive plan like this, even if it's kind of slow because of the nature of the position. <coughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, probably going to jump the knight over now. But also try to get the bishop out first. So like maybe trading bishop before and then doing the knight maneuver. Um... So let's see, what's going to happen if e4 happens? Because that's what white wants to do. They want to play e4. I could take, they can't take this way because of this. So they would have to take with the bishop. But I like the look of that. It looks pretty good for me, I think. But yeah, I think I'm okay just waiting. So let's go ahead and play knight e7. <coughs> Can you show us in detail how you do pre-moves? That's the one key skill that helped you win so many close games. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit. 
Um, so do I want to jump in now is the question? Or do I want to do maybe something else like developing this knight? Um, the only reason I would not want to go there is if e4 was a problem for me, but I could simply take, and again, I have that threat on the d4 pawn, so I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and jump the knight in. And you can see how because this g pawn has been pushed forward, I don't have to worry about getting attacked there. It's only this e pawn that I'm concerned about. But the issue with that is that once I trade, like I just mentioned, there's going to be a weakness here on d4. So... Okay, they're going to go for it. But I think I want to just trade because if I, I mean, if I retreat, I'm just kind of, it's, it seems a little too passive. I think I will take, okay, they took back right away, which just blunders a pawn, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, I think we're just going to take this guy. We've got it defended with the queen. And you do want to pay attention because it's lined up with the queen that there are no discovered checks on my king, right? Because I could lose my queen if that were the case. But uh, this is obviously blocking that off. And the bishop can't go over here and put me in check that way. So I'm fine. But just whenever you have your pieces lined up with another piece like that, you got to pay attention, right? Because a lot of times this move would be available to white and I could very easily lose my queen. But in this case, we're okay. Wow, knight to b5. Wow, what a move. Wow, okay. Wow, they're they're basically trying to take advantage of what I just said, but also threatening the fork. That's an amazing move. That's an amazing move. Because if I retreat, they, they just go here anyway. Wow. Okay. We have check, but there's c3. If I take here, the knight's coming in. That's amazing. Okay, well... I'm I'm actually thinking of giving up my queen and going into it with two pieces for the queen. Man. So here's what I'm thinking. We take, we allow this, we bring the queen back. Yes, we're going to lose the queen, but at least we can take back with the knight. We have a knight and a bishop for a queen, which is not, I mean, it's not the greatest, but it's not like the end of the world. Because otherwise, what do I have to do? Once that knight comes in, my position is, is horrendous. I have to go king e7, I think. I don't want to step into this, probably. And then I lose my rook, and my king is totally... Wow, that's an incredible move. Incredible move. Okay. I don't really see any other ways out of it. If we take here, I mean, that's not going to be good enough. Like I mentioned, this just doesn't really do much for me. Somebody said move the knight. Yeah, you can't go knight c6 because it's just pinned. And they just take your queen anyway. So, I guess we gotta go for that line. That's amazing. That is amazing. Well played by our opponent. Fighting these advanced tactics. Um, yeah. I mean, I even said it, right? I said you have to be careful about putting your queen in, in line. I just didn't see knight b5. Um, so here we go. We have a knight and a bishop for the queen. And if we're able to get this out and castle, it's still going to be tricky for white to win. I mean, yes, the queen is better, but if we don't give him any targets, um, sometimes it can be difficult for the queen to, you know, to figure out what to do. So let's see if we can do that. Queen to d3. Okay, so we got to get this guy out and castle really quickly before we get into trouble. I might play e5 just to shut down the bishop. 
because this is kind of an annoying uh, area of the board. Even if I try to defend, the bishop can come in. So yeah, I think we do need to play this. There's a check, but we can block and then go here, and I think we're okay. So let's play e5. Try to get that bishop out of there. What I'm going to do is play... Okay, so they immediately go for the threat. Mm, that's another really good move. Wow. Yeah, it's a great move. Because I can defend, but they're going to take here. Man. They're just going to take there. I guess I could also castle, and if they take, what would I do? Bring this bishop out, maybe? Hmm. Seems a bit risky. But rook d8, bishop takes, also looks really bad. The reason is, after I move my bishop somewhere, they can just go here. And then I have to move the rook, and this falls apart. everything falls apart. Alright, so we gotta try it. I think we have to try it. I think this is going to happen. We obviously can't take because of the checkmate. Um, I got to get the bishop out. I'm going to lose another pawn, but <clears throat> it, it is what it is. I have to develop. So here we go. Let's play bishop c5. I guess white's probably going to take this. Um, no, that seems like an even better move. Of course. Because they want to play b4, and I can't get out of the pin. All right, I guess we can take. Uh, if this happens, then we move the bishop. If this happens, we can retreat with the knight. Maybe we can survive. Let's try it. Yes, guys, yes. I'm getting a little suspicious. It just feels like every move is like, ooh, didn't see that. Ooh, wow, good good tactic. Oh, wow. <laughs> Usually when you feel that way, you're either playing against a really good player or, or something else is going on. Like It seems like every move is like just perfect, yeah. Trading the rooks, and the queen's going to kind of eat me alive here. Let's go ahead and take it. Take the pawn. I guess the queen's coming down here. Not looking good. Yep, there you go. Maybe he'll blunder the queen. Maybe we can get a fork or something. I'm going to try to like centralize my knight and bishop with the king and see what happens here. Maybe like this and jump the knight in and you never know. You never know. Sometimes people decide to like turn off the engine, you know, and play for real for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Bend this way. That's defended. We can jump our king up here just to keep everything defended. Okay, let's go here.
You have the best chess teaching videos. Thanks. Thanks, Nils. Appreciate you. All right. So he goes for the check back there. Let's come over here, I guess. I'm just going to kind of keep, you know, jumping around these pieces like this. So I try not to lose them. Um, Defend. We're going to lose this pawn, though, but we can't do anything about that. I'm going to try to take this pawn and maybe push this. Who knows? Basically, when you're losing like this, you just want to give yourself chances to win. Like, yeah, it's it's a long shot for sure. See, I can't even take it. I have to go back here. But, you know, you give yourself chances. And if they do something stupid, maybe it works out, you know? Like maybe they move the king here. I go bam, fork, and I win the game. Something something like that. We'll try to attack this way. <clears throat> Again, just trying to if I can get this pawn, maybe we can threaten something. Yeah, that's that's the issue. That pawn's gonna go. All right, let's take it. Then we'll take this guy. Still have the knight in the pawn to try to push. You, like, why is white taking so long to take the bishop? You didn't know you're supposed to take the bishop. I mean, come on. I gotta get my king over and so I can start pushing this. Yeah, I can't uh, get the king out of the way. There's a fork here. Pretty obvious. That was the wrong move. Now, see, now they're playing for real, I think. They're playing for real now. We got a fork. Back takes too slow, right? I saw that. Me. All right, so let's let's see, guys. Let's see. Hmm. Ninety three. And I'm pretty sure the reason it's 93 is because he started playing some moves on his own at the end there. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it had to be, right? Let's let's check the uh, <clears throat> some of these moves. Let's check some of these moves. So this was kind of weird. I mean, most people don't do this, right? Like, most players are not going to just randomly start throwing these pawns forward because usually it's not a good thing in this case i guess it was fine but generally speaking that's probably not the best plan right and then okay that was maybe a normal idea but here i mean i don't know i don't know i guess it's possible that they just happen to see this like let's check the time usage here yeah, it's pretty consistent, guys. It's pretty consistent. 
like about 15 seconds on every move. Bam. And again, another 12 seconds. Yeah. I mean, that's what's super suspicious, right? Like, like here's the thing. If you see this, okay? If you see knight to b5, and you see the idea of captures, captures, and you win a queen, great. That's fine. You're going to play it, like, almost immediately, right? You're going to just snap that pawn off and take the queen. Like, that's the whole point why you went there, right? So why is the person spending, like, 12 seconds to do that, you know? Weird. Weird. All right, I think we can safely... I mean, I'm probably going to report them. I could be wrong, but it just looks... And even after this, like, all these moves are just, like, so perfect. Like, leave the bishop and castle. You take the pawn... You don't take it here, even though it's a free pawn and looks like a good move. You play queen c3. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Everything. Everything. Anyway. Happens. Yeah, I will, I will report. I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, let's... Okay, actually, I didn't update the last win, I don't think. So we had 155... And then we have one loss. Honestly, that's pretty good to like not face a single cheater until this point. Pretty good. I think. <laughs> Don't count the loss. I could say loss. Uh, I could say one, one cheater. Oh, you can't see it on there. Question mark? I don't know. All right. Let's report this player. Cheating. And let's move on. We still got to get to 1450. So we can't let um, we can't let a little a little cheater here or there stop us. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. We're going to play E5. And play knight f6. Okay, Vienna Gambit. Pretty much with almost any opening when you see f4, the way that I like to play is d5. And it's kind of just like a principled approach of like, they're opening up the king, you just want to strike at the center as quick as you can. So against the king's gambit, same thing, d5 is a good move. And I think here we can just take, and what's the move here? Remember, unknown. Hey, welcome. Thank you. I think we can just put the bishop on e6. I don't actually know these lines super well, so I don't want to overthink and get into a time, you know, some time trouble. I'm going to play some quick moves that just seem like they're logical moves. Like putting the bishop there just to kind of defend these light squares seems pretty good. Um, c5 a lot of the times is a good good move here. Puts pressure on the center and also really gives your queen some good options. But I do want to check what happens if this check, but I can play knight c6. So yeah, I think c5 makes a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and play that. Okay, so maybe now queen a5, and we can start attacking some of these dark squares. Yeah, that looks very good. Of course, that they want to trade. I'm happy with that. Why? Because white's pawn structure will be all messed up. You would have isolated pawn, isolated pawn, isolated pawn. So yeah, queen a5 looks to be a good move. Let's go ahead and play that. Yeah, the thing about looking at recent games, though, is like so sometimes people don't cheat consistently. Sometimes they just do it in one game. Like they might, you know, play normally and then, you know, maybe that person realized this was a speedrun account and they're like, oh, I'll just, you know, use Stockfish on this game or whatever. Like, okay, what's happening here? Frederick, hey, welcome. What's happening here? He wants to do this. He's willing to give up 
a whole piece. So this is interesting. Is really that really worth it? The rook's going to come down, which definitely is scary. But just because it's scary doesn't mean I shouldn't take the piece. So let's see. If the rook takes, we actually have a check of our own to go after white's king. The king could move. We could start grabbing some pawns. If bishop b5 ever happened, I could block. Takes, takes. Could be a sacrifice. Oof, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get crazy. So what I like to do is like see if there's a move that just sort of defends everything. Ah, maybe I take and after this, instead of going for the pawn hunting, I just play c4. Shut down that bishop. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I think I can get away with it. And just because something is scary doesn't mean you shouldn't play it. You always want to calculate. And if you see a way to defend or deal with the threat, then you should probably do it. You should probably take the piece. So I'm going to go for it. Queen takes a3. I'm expecting the rook to come down. And like I mentioned, I think just shutting down the bishop is the best thing to do. Because really, if you think about it, it's a queen and a rook. That's all white has to attack with. And everything is defended nicely by my bishop, right? So... There is going to be a knight that maybe comes in, but I'm going to have some time to react, I think. Yeah, so we could also go check. Check. Maybe the bishop blocks. Oh, a queen f5 actually would force a queen trade. But there's still going to be the check. We could just slide the king over. Still forcing the queen trade. Hmm. So here we have two options that both look pretty good. This looks pretty good because it just totally locks out the bishop. This looks pretty good because then white's king can't really castle and looks like maybe we could force a queen trade. I don't know. I, re I really just like the idea of that, that bishop being totally locked out of the game. I really like that. So yeah, I, th I think I might just do that. I mean, I, I still have this threat to follow up maybe later if white doesn't deal with it. So I'm going to make the decision here to um, play c4. I just I don't want that bishop coming in here because that looks like a very powerful move. I think we need to get rid of that. Check, then block. Yeah, I guess I could have done that, actually. That might have been smarter. Maybe. I guess, I guess the other part of it is I'm not, like, 100% sure if this is where I want my queen to be, right? Because here... I can easily kind of come back this direction and help out over here. Once I kind of commit to going this way, I can't I can't get back over here easily. And so that's what what my concern is, right? Like, is that really where I want my queen to be? I don't know. I, I don't actually know. Those are the kind of questions that are a little bit difficult to answer in a in a 10 minute game. So let's see. You could play bishop e7 actually, since it's defended by the queen, then just castle. That might be the simplest. You can also just develop this knight and try to play rook to b8 to trade this guy off. Now that I'm up the piece, uh, any kind of trade. Wow. So many moves I'm not expecting. What happens if I take it? He's going to try to take the rook somehow. But how? If you sack a rook, I mean, yeah, you get a rook, but you, you lost a rook too. So that doesn't really help. Where else can you move the rook to? Like here? Here? Okay, but then I can go check, check maybe here. Hmm. I don't know where the rook goes. Maybe it actually goes all the way back. Is my it, Let's say it goes all the way back. Let's say I take. It goes all the way back here. It stops the check. Can I save my rook? No. Can't. So I think we need to jump in here. Manchu, Kumar, hey, thank you. I think we need to jump in here with the check first. 
then we take it, and then wherever the rook goes, we might have, oh, he could go to, no, he couldn't go to b2, and we'd say, all right, I think we need to do this first, and then I believe we can take it now. Basically, after the rook moves somewhere, my plan is going to be check, and then a queen trade. And really, even if we lose the rook, okay, we got two bishops, it's still probably worth it. We just move this guy out somewhere, we castle, and we're still happy. Okay, let's, let's do it. Very tricky position, very difficult position to analyze everything in a 10-minute game without using all my time. So I'm trying to kind of focus on the, the what I think is the main thing, right? The rook. And also just sort of scanning for, you know, queen checks and stuff that looks dangerous. Um, but I think white is running out of pieces here. <clears throat> Just getting some texting in while I wait. We need some ginger root for this position. That's exactly right. Okay, so he goes for rook c7. Here's obviously the point. He wants to take the rook. So I think we go for check. On the natural knight block, we can go here and force a queen trade. Oh, there's knight f4. Oh, knight f4. The other thing is we just say, fine, take my rook. I don't really care. I play like a bishop move. Takes the rook. And the castle. I'll have two bishops for the rook, which I'm happy with. Also, I have this pin going on, so he can't really develop his pieces. So, again, we have this, which one is better? Yeah, this is, this is risky, because then I'm letting out the rook and the knight, and I can't force a trade, because knight f4, if I attack, he's going to say, who cares, he's going to take my rook, I could take with check, he's going to move somewhere, I don't know where, somewhere, here, 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 and then... Hmm, what an interesting position. And I have to make a decision quickly. So this is when chess is tough because you have two options that both look kind of good and you don't know which one is the best. You don't know. I'm going to go with this one. I just, I, I really like keeping these pieces stuck. I like getting my king to safety. And yeah, I lose a rook, but who cares? Because I have two bishops. Two bishops is better than a rook. So material wise, I'm still ahead. But on top of that, now I feel like I'm actually safe. I feel like my king is actually safe, and now I can start thinking about how to attack white's king, which is in a bad way. Was it the best move? I don't know. Maybe maybe not. We can check it after, but I'm at least happy with this, so this is what we'll do. Crystal Mirror, thank you. Do I speak Spanish? Yeah. Not really. I mean, a little bit. A little bit, but... I wouldn't say that I speak Spanish, no. Okay, so he just goes back. Interesting. Takes the rook, and he gets out of dodge. All right, so... Let's see. How do we proceed? I mean, is now the time to start grabbing stuff? I really want to develop first. Let's, let's go ahead and develop. And I'm still pretty happy about this pin. So that's why I'm not in a hurry to do a move like this. Even though I get a pawn, I essentially unleash a knight and a rook into the game, which is kind of scary. He goes for this. That's going to allow my knight to come in. That can't be right. That cannot be right. 
what I'm going to take here with tempo on the queen. And now I'm starting to think about the king. Now I'm starting to think about how do we how do we checkmate this king? Because all of a sudden the knight is going to be a monster here with g4. Can't go here right now, but we could go to d6. We also have queen moves to keep an eye on. Very complicated position again. Um, but the most natural looks to be knight to g4. Let's see where the queen's going to go first. Oh, and you know what? I could even let this happen. Take back with the pawn and unleash the rook. That's another idea. So lots of interesting stuff going on here. But yeah, bishop d6 looks pretty good. Knight g4 looks pretty good. Maybe a queen move looks pretty good. And I'm just trying to fill my mind with all these ideas. And then hopefully when after white makes a move, I'll be a little bit more ready to play something because I already have sort of the candidate moves in the back of my mind, right? This one, this one, maybe this or this, maybe even this move, depending on where the queen goes. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, he goes to e2. Let's start with the obvious knight to g4. Only moves would be here and here. If here, ah, then we have bishop d6. Looks really great. So probably the king has to go here. We still have bishop d6. And still, that looks amazing. Let's do it. Looks amazing. <coughs> so we're going to follow it up with bishop d6. And again, because I was thinking about those ideas in the back of my mind, I was kind of ready. Here we go, bishop d6. Threatening checkmate right there. So he can't even take my bishop. That's just game over. I'm also threatening the rook. Very sharp game, though. Okay, I didn't consider that move. It's a move, but now I can do this. I'll lose my knight, but I, oh, I could go here first. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? All right, let's just do it. I got to make a decision. Getting too low on time. Um, F5. I don't know if that's a helpful move to throw in or not. Let's go ahead and take the rook. And I think we need to get our rook into the game here. So let's do that. Still keeping this pin. And I'm going to just try not to lose on time now. Kind of the biggest problem in the position. Do have a check here. Maybe even h5, because the king takes, I'm happy with that, because the rook can come up. Also solves any back rank mate problems, so h5 looks like a pretty logical move, actually. Queen c6, no, but then I have queen check, so you can't get away with that, I don't think. He has to keep the queen guarding this, probably. Yeah, I'm thinking about h5. But even actually, I could even move my rook, and there's no checkmate because I have bishop f8. Okay, so again, trying to make use of my opponent's time, like filling my mind with some of these ideas. He doesn't stop this move, so let's do that. That's got to be pretty good. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's the fork. Now it's falling apart. And. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to just take some stuff, and I think I will some point here play h5 i don't want to get back rank mated so that's an easy way to solve that problem okay let's go check let's play i can't pre-move h5 because there's g4 but i'm probably going to play h5 okay so regarding pre-moving i am going to start looking for safe pre-moves you kind of got to plan like what are all the possible moves that your opponent could do 
can you play any safe moves? So here's a good one. I could pre-move that safely because I knew the king had to move. This looks like a good... I'm not going to pre-move it, but actually it might be a safe pre-move. Yeah. Only one move, so I can pre-move this. Pre-move this. Notice they're all safe moves. Like I'm, I know that my opponent can't take my queen or put me in checkmate or something if I play these moves, right? That's what you need to look for when you're pre-moving. Probably going to run here when he puts me in check. And at this point, I might actually... We'll see if we can get checkmate with the queen and the bishop. But the other option is just sacrifice the queen for the rook, push my pass pawns, and, and pre-move a, you know, a checkmate that way. That might be the easiest thing to do. Let's see what, what white's going to do. Oh, they disconnected. Okay. All right. But yeah, like, let's just say they would have went check. I was going to go here. And if they just, like, I don't know, move their rook somewhere random. Oh, they're back. They're back. Interesting strategy. The, uh, the fake disconnect strategy. I don't know if I've seen that one before. Maybe it's not a fake dis. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Thought they were going to start moving after they reconnected, but I guess not. Okay, anyway. Good game to our opponent. They did play very aggressively. I, I got to say, I like their style. It was didn't quite work out for them, but I, I like their style. So, check the game review. And, <clears throat> okay, so we played all right, but... Um, 78 is not amazing. So let's see, what did we what did we do wrong this game? Five takes. All this was pretty standard stuff. Okay. Queen a5. All right. Queen takes. Okay. C4. All right. So let's see. Did the uh, computer want to check? No, it wanted knight to d7. And what was the plan on bishop to b5? I'm just curious. Whoa! Castle queenside. Huh. huh. Yeah. I mean, that looks amazing, actually, in, in hindsight, with the computer telling me it's the best move. In my mind, I was like, oh, my queenside is open. I don't even, I didn't even think about castling queenside. But yeah, it kind of solves a bunch of problems. You get rid of that rook in the corner. There's no more threats. You get out of the pin. You defend this. And you attack the rook all at the same time. It's a, it's an amazing idea. And I didn't even think about it. So, okay. Well, there you go. That's the stockfish solution. C4 wasn't bad. Back and takes was the best move. Oh, wow. The best move here. King to D8. Again, with these moves that I'm just not even considering kind of a weakness that I do have, I will tell you guys. A lot of times I, I miss some of these candidate moves, right? Tag the rook. Why doesn't have time to take you or you simply take their rook? Okay, makes sense, I guess. Oh well, yeah, but queen b7, that looks so scary. Stockfish is like, nope, it's fine. You just start taking stuff. <laughs> queen takes a2, typical stockfish move. Like, don't even worry about the queen and rook sitting next to your king. Yeah, I'm not going to play chess like that. Anyway, um... Yeah, even here you can see <coughs> after giving up the rook, I'm still better. I'm still like plus two for black. So two bishops are just better than and we had a nice attack here. And yeah, pretty straightforward. All right. Um, let me see what time it is. I, I might have to. Uh... All right, we'll, we'll play one more game. I don't know if we're going to quite make it to 1450, but uh, I'm going to have to go for lunch here in a little bit. Let's play one more, though. We are black again. 
let's play knight f6. Maybe we'll do like a king's Indian. Oh, we're going to face a London. There's a trap. Should I play a trap? No, let's not let's not play a trap. Let's just just play something more normal. All right, we're going to go with the king's Indian setup. And I'm thinking about actually going and hunting down this bishop. So I could play knight h5, trying to hunt it down. Now, if he tried to go here, I would have h6, g5. We could trade it off. Do I really want to do that? Maybe not. I'll just castle instead. That, that's an idea, but I think we'll just keep it simple. Ah, h4. Okay, interesting. So white's going to try to attack us. So this will be a good um, lesson in how to defend. So one way is to play h5, and you really just try to shut down what they're going to do. Now notice g4 wouldn't really make sense. I have lots of pieces that could take that and it would still kind of blockade the position. The only concern with this would be if like, let's just say f3 happens and then g4 happens and maybe white gets some more pieces to support that, then they probably could force the position open. But the alternative allowing h5 looks like it's going to be even easier for white. So I think in an effort to make it more difficult for white to attack me, I am going to play h5 in this and now that I kind of know, I kind of know white's not going to castle this way, probably. I mean, I don't know for sure, but probably looks like they want to attack me. It tells me that they're either going to leave their king in the center or they're probably going to go over here. So I want to start thinking even now of like, what do I need to do about it? If they leave it in the center, the best thing for me to do is going to be to somehow strike at the center and open up the king so I can use a rook or queen or whatever to attack them. And of course, if they castle here, well, then my best plan is probably going to be to you know, launch an attack over here somehow. So that's what I'm thinking through. So thinking maybe like knight c6 just to uh, get ready to play e5 right away. Let's play knight to d7, but then I block the bishop, which I'm kind of needing to support uh, to, to control that. So yeah, we'll go with knight to c6, keeping the uh, three pieces there. Okay, so that looks like a bit too ambitious. Maybe white's idea is to not capture back and play h5. But I'm still probably going to just take it. All right, so if we take, they take. The bishop comes out with a tempo. And I don't know what white's going to do after that. If they push right away, I'm going to just take. And again, I have everything defended, and it's I still feel like I'm pretty safe. So I'm going to take it. Take it. Here we go, h5. Okay, so I think we take this way. We could also take with the knight. But I like that the pawn defends here. So let's do it that way. And I mean, you know, you can definitely do this if you're white because you do open up the files. But it just seems like a bit too premature because I think white's king is going to actually get into trouble. And now my bishop's coming out. And I'm going to play e5. And yeah, I, I think white's king is actually going to be the one that gets attacked in this game. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Drew. Appreciate that. All right, so knight f3, it's pinned. I'm still thinking about e5. So what happens? Takes, takes. Looks pretty good. Of course, this can't happen because of the pin. And then e5 is going to bust open the center. We're going to get to the king. And that's what we, that's exactly what we want. So here we go. E5. And which way is the question? Um, we take with the pawn. The bishop moves somewhere. Can we get away with E4? Takes, takes, takes. Wow, it's kind of wild. We could probably grab that. Also take with the knight. Yeah, I think I will take with the pawn. <clears throat> I think both of those captures were okay, but um, I don't know why I just like the pawn because now I can maybe push it forward, like I said, and unleash the bishop and get the rook coming over here and start attacking that king. Hmm.
But notice the importance of trying to strike at the center as quickly as you can if somebody's attacking you on the flank. Because if you don't do that and you don't create these counter chances to attack them, well, then they're just going to have plenty of time to do whatever they want. And eventually they are going to figure out a way to attack your king, right? But by creating these threats, white doesn't have time. They don't have time to bring their queen up and castle and bring the other rook over and start doing whatever they want to do. They have to deal with my threats. And once they deal with this one, I'm probably going to play e4 and create some more threats. And maybe rook e8, e4, or e4 right away, followed by rook e8. I'm not sure yet. But the point is you don't just give them time to attack your king. It's kind of important. Okay, so bishop there does pin the knight, so that's probably wouldn't be able to do that because I lose the queen. So maybe we have to get out of the pin first, or we just play something like rook to e8. I could play queen e8. The idea that I'm supporting this and I'm also getting out of the pin. The only thing I don't like about that move is that my rook is stuck. So that's why I'm hesitant. But I really do like the fact that I get out of the pin, because that's, that's kind of an annoying pin, especially if the knight comes in. Uh, I don't really want to have to deal with that, so I think I will go for this move. Yeah, I am going to do that, because I really want to play e4. And like I said, I really want to be able to use my knight. So we're going to go queen e8. Um, and we can also bring this rook over here if we need to. So let's see what white's going to do. Okay, they do jump in, which is why it would have been dangerous if that was pinned. But since it's not, we can just take. And they're going to take us back, and we can play f5 maybe? There's a check. Do I care? I can jump over here. A little bit scary. I can also play... Yeah, but then I'm going to be able to play like e4, which is also scary for white. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and start with the capture. I could also play knight to d5 is another way to do this. A lot of interesting moves here. A lot of interesting moves. All right, let's go ahead. We'll trade. And I think I do want to play f5. I don't like this move, bishop d5. I don't like putting my king here, but it looks like everything is defended. This pawn is very well defended, so I'm not like in danger for that. And I'm going to start to have my other threats very soon. So let's also queen d5. Oh, a queen d5, I can play like queen f7. Okay, so let's play f5. And probably we're going to see bishop d5 check. I think I'm going to go in the corner. I could also go here. The idea that if I ever needed to move my king off of there, I could go here. But then it also lines up with a potential check, so it's I'm not sure if it's worth it. Well, yeah, we'll just we'll just keep it simple. Go in the corner, I guess, to stay away from the knight g5 ideas. But notice, this is what I was talking about. This is well defended, which is important because if it wasn't, I would be in, I'd be losing, right? That's important. Okay, we need to. So now we can play e4. It opens up our bishop and. White has a problem with the knight here. If they come over here, again, I'm not concerned. Everything is well defended. So let's go ahead and play e4. <clears throat> so we've got our threat here. We've got this one. And I'm also thinking about queens coming in, the knight coming in, queen coming over here. Lots of, of moves. So let's see what white's going to do. They play queen f2. Which I don't really see the threat, so I'm not super concerned. I think we just take. 
take with the bishop or the pawn. The idea of taking with the pawn is to put pressure on the e pawn. But I don't know if it's as good as just gaining the tempo on the rook. I think I like the tempo gain here. Also stopped white from castling. So I think this is the way to go. And yeah, we got a lot of good follow-up moves here. Knight to e5. Queen to e5. Maybe even knight to b4. Queen to g6. I think I'm liking knight to e5 the most. I don't know. Queen e5 looks pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Let's see where the rook's going to go first, and then we'll decide. Hmm. One thing about queen e5 that I have to pay attention to is that then I only have one defender on this pawn. So I do have to watch out for even like queen sacks where the rook comes in. Bam. Not checkmate because I have bishop h6, but it's looking pretty close to checkmate. So I want to keep an eye on that. So maybe I will, with that in mind, leave the queen here to defend. King to d2. Okay. That's a solid move by our opponent. Sacrificing the rook with the idea that they're going to just then have some real pressure here. So I don't think I'm going to take that. I don't think that's worth it this moment in time. Question is, what am I going to do? I don't want to go here. Sack the rook because I have the pin. If they play c4, we would just the knight and keep attacking. I can also take this. That opens up a square for my king to run to. There's still knight to e5. Queen to e5. Again, I'm a little concerned with that idea. Let's see. I don't know if it's as... Might not be as dangerous as I think it is. So... We are up a piece. Okay. Yeah, it's a tricky position. It's a very tricky position. Queen g6. I don't really like the idea of that. Very tricky position. Knight to e5 just feels like that's where the knight should be. So that's kind of what I want to play. All right, let's let's play ninety five, and basically the way that we win this game is by not falling for some tactic that gets me checkmated or lose a queen or something. That's how we win. So you know, I'm just gonna watch out for stuff that could happen over here. Knight to g four, but. Then I lose a defense of the pawn. Maybe now, though, I'm threatening to take, actually, because after this, then we jump in with the check. Okay, he doesn't let me. We can go back, which threatens this. Very good threat. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. And this is a, a nasty move. I don't know how white's going to stop that. Don't know how they're gonna stop that. Because you've got it's a triple fork essentially. Alright, let's just make sure. Let's just say the queen sacks this side. Now I have it defended enough, so there we go. Queen sack doesn't cut it. And now it's a big question. Do I take the rook or do I take the bishop? I'm going to take the bishop. Generally speaking, it's better to take a free piece than a rook and lose a piece. So that's called winning the exchange. This is winning a free piece. 
And again, super important that I have this defended well enough. So I think we're okay. White is running out of pieces now, so it's getting a little bit easier. So I'll have to be careful here. I could probably just jump my knight back like this, add another defender. Um, yeah, which is what I'm going to do. So we have knight f6. <clears throat> also, like, queen here to try to trade queens. And threaten over here looks pretty good. Okay, um, I think queen e5 is still the move, still threatens this, threatens the queen trade, and now if, if white wants to sacrifice this, that's fine. <coughs> okay, I want to take this, but it's defended, so what I can do is throw in this one, and now white has a problem. Now white has a problem. Queen's going to come down. The king's going to have to go here. It's actually going to be checkmate because the bishops are going to be crisscrossing here. Don't know what white does about that. I, I don't see a, see a way out. Okay, so they go for that, but here we go. This is what I was talking about, and this is going to be checkmate. Just verifying. Yeah, it is checkmate. All right, good game to our opponent. They played very aggressively, um, but I think we defended pretty well. Let's check the, the game review here. And 90, all right, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's see if we made any obvious mistakes. Okay, so yeah, h5 was the best way here. Knight c6, engine didn't love it so much. Yeah. Hey, what was I supposed to take with here? Did it want the knight? Yeah, they're pretty close. They're pretty close, but I guess it wanted to, to put the pressure on the bishop. And then just take here. Yeah, so that's another way, but I think this was also pretty fine. Okay, we struck at the center. It got kind of crazy, but... You know, one thing to, to remember is when you're attacking, you can't just sacrifice your pawns um and that's all there is to it like you have to look at what's going to happen after the pawns are, are taken and i was able to create this blockade to where even though white had the open files they couldn't get through i think if white would have been a little bit slower in pushing those pawns prepared it a little bit more probably would have had more success um and then yeah i guess we played pretty well from there on out so cool all right Good game, uh, 1448, we almost made it to 1450, guys. I have to go, uh, it's lunchtime for me. I blame the, uh, the cheater, blame the cheater for that one. Let me do a quick poll here. Um, should I put one loss uh, or no losses in the, in the little uh, stats here? I wanna see what you guys think. Because we did lose, we did lose. Well, I, I'm pretty sure we lost to a cheater. So here we go. You guys tell me. One or one or zero. What do you want to see there where that question mark is? One or zero. One loss, zero losses. What did we have? Ooh, it's pretty close. 59%. Okay, 70%, zero losses. All right, if you want to vote, go ahead. Now's your time. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty heavily weighted on no, no losses. 62%, six, yeah, about 60-40. One until he gets banned. <laughs> All right. I'll put a zero, um, 
I'll put zero and I'll put an asterisk just until we confirm that it was a cheating because that could change. So we'll, we'll do that. How about that? All right, guys. Everybody's typing one loss, but the poll is saying zero losses. So I, I'm going to go with the poll. I mean, if you want to say one, you got to vote for it. All right, guys. I got to go. Peace out. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care. And um, don't feel bad if you lose to a cheater. Happens to everybody. See you guys.